Right now, Manchester United are going through it both on and off the field. They may have some new owners in real life, but when you start a save with them on FM24, they are in over £700 million worth of debt. Today, that changes as I take over from Eric Ten Hag as Manchester United manager, and this video will not end until I clear that massive, massive debt. So guys, here we are on the finances screen for Manchester United at the start of a new save. Now, a couple of caveats. I have prevented transfers in this first transfer window because I just wanted to use what Ten Hag has at his disposal. But we've got £56 million in the, in the club bank balance, but there is the debt. £720 million worth of net debt. Over here, we've got £606 million worth of outstanding loans. And you're probably thinking, Steve, how are you going to clear this? Well, I'm basically going to play through every single season that I can, selling players, wheeling and dealing, doing what I can do to make as much money as I can, but I'm not going to be signing anybody. So this current Manchester United squad is going to have to do the job until we can actually, you know, clear the debt and then maybe pass the save on to you guys so that you can go and sign up and people because that's the fun bit, isn't it? But we're going to be using the existing Manchester United squad on a real world transfer update. So this is kind of what I'm looking at doing. We're going to be running GYR's 4-3-3 Thanos tactic in this one because I know it's good and I need a good tactic to kind of help carry me through this, to be perfectly honest with you. And we are going to be running these three players in their pin positions. Kobi Mainu is obviously going to be the one of the main guys in our midfield. He is 18 years of age, having a fantastic season in real life. Got his first England cap, so massive shout out to him. I'm not a huge fan of him in FM, so I'm intrigued to see how he gets on over the course of this uh, this save. I think it could be very interesting. We're pinning uh, Marcus Rashford in on the left-hand side because sometimes the AI assistant manager pops him up top and I want him to play on the left-hand side so that Hoyland can play up front. And then Garnacho, we're going to basically move him all the way across to the right-hand side. Uh, I think he can be quite effective there. Obviously, he's very uh, well-versed on both feet. Uh, so I think he could be a real danger there. Obviously, we do have Sancho who is going to be out on loan and then come back. So we may have some competition for places in these wide areas, but this is what I'm going to start with this year. And obviously, we're going to have to have good players coming through our development squad. There's certain players in here who may get into the team. I'm looking more at Daniel Gore. I think he could maybe get in there, but he's going to Port Vale on loan. So obviously, that's not going to be this season. But we're going to have to see how we get on with Manchester United. Obviously, we do have the four competitions this season. We are in the Champions League, much like United were in real life. But basically, I'm seeing this year as kind of a bit of a free hit have our first season and then i can get into tackling the debt anything that we can achieve this season will be a plus so let's get into it first season simulated with the manchester united team As I said in my introduction, I saw this season as a bit of a free hit before we get into the work in the transfer windows. And I started with a little bit of a baptism of fire, taking on Liverpool at Anfield in our first game. We lost this one 3-1 on the day, but we did then settle into a bit more of a rhythm and started picking up points, including a couple of 7-0 demolitions of teams like Chelsea and Burnley. But we were still prone to the odd silly result like losing away to both Everton and Luton. Our star man this season was Marcus Rash. The homegrown forward provided 30 goals and 15 assists this season in all competitions, whilst being our highest average rated player over the whole campaign. Also, Kobi Mainu played the full 54 games this season, but still needs some work to develop his attributes, but you can see that the raw potential I'm hoping will develop throughout the course of this save. In the second half of the season, we were pretty consistent, only suffering three losses in 2024 against City, Brighton and Chelsea. But we did conclude the season with a 12-game unbeaten run to see us finish fourth in the table and qualify for next season's Champions League. Which, to be honest, was, even though I said it was a free hit, was kind of my minimum requirement. And speaking of the Champions League, we were drawn in Group D alongside AC Milan, Benfica and Real Sociedad. And our goal here was to do better than Man United did in real life and progress to the knockout stages of the competition. We started the campaign really well with three consecutive wins, but then faltered slightly in the return fixtures, but still managed to top our group, meaning we went straight into the round of 16, where we were face Italian champions into Milan. The first leg of this one would be in Italy, and to my surprise, we took the lead first through Bruno Fernandes, who was in acres of space inside the penalty area after a Marcus Rashford cutback. 
However, in the second half, Inter began to play their way back into the game and finally pulled level through a DiMarco header at the far post. And I thought we'd escape the first leg with a draw, but in injury time, we gave away a penalty, which Hakan Kalhanoglu rifled into the top corner to give us a tough ask at Old Trafford. And that task was made even harder inside the first seven minutes of the second leg as Nicolo Barella extended that lead with his strike from just inside the penalty area. That goal galvanized the boys and we drew level almost instantly as Alejandro Garnacho spun his man in the penalty area before putting the ball past Jan Sommer. We then proceeded to batter Inter but we couldn't get the breakthrough meaning that our Champions League campaign was over for the season. So there was no huge success in either of those two competitions, but in the domestic cup competitions, we were just that little bit better. In the EFL Cup, we had a very easy run all the way to the final, defeating Everton, Newcastle, MK Dons and Charlton to set up that final appearance against championship side Leeds United. As you'd expect here, we asserted our dominance and put Leeds away with goals from Marcus Rashford, Luke Shaw and Rasmus Hoyland to lift our first trophy of the save. However, our run in the FA Cup was much more difficult. We advanced past West Brom, QPR and Derby County before facing Manchester City in the quarterfinals. As you'd expect, this was a cagey affair that went into extra time where IRL missing man Tyrell Malassia scored a lovely volley from a free kick routine to see us move into the semi-finals at Wembley. Here we'd face Arsenal and we would need extra time yet again to break the deadlock and this time it was Rasmus Hoyland who pushed the ball beyond David Raya in the 120th minute. So we moved into the FA Cup final where we face Unai Emery and Aston Villa. I was expecting another tough test in this one, but Villa had Matty Cash sent off on the 8th minute for a horror tackle on Malassia. Then, with the man advantage, we began to probe for an opener and got rewarded with that breakthrough in the second half as Garnacho, Rashford and Martinez all got on the score sheet to make that trophy number 2 of the season. I'm calling this season a success, but there is still plenty of room for improvement. And this is where the work begins as we will start to trim the fat of this squad as we try to shift as much of that debt as humanly possible. So we have transfers to talk to you about and I have gone as aggressive as I possibly could in this transfer window to see what we could do. One player that I was disappointed to lose because I wasn't paying attention while simulating through season one is Rafael Varane. He has left on a free, which is really disappointing because I've sold him for millions before in saves. Uh, he has gone to Atletico Madrid. I wasn't aware that his contract was up at the end of that season. Uh, so very disappointingly, he did leave for free. He was on an absolute fortune though. Uh, so that has helped us from a way budget perspective you can see some of the other players that i've let go for free as well johnny evans has gone uh, anthony martial has gone as well um, and then we have got to work in selling a couple of players these three are the ones i'm going to highlight casemiro has gone to al ali he has gone to saudi for 45 and a half million pounds that could rise to 53 million pounds donny van der beek has gone to brighton for 16 and a half million pounds and harry Maguire has gone to newcastle for 20 million pounds and obviously my transfers in Again, we've not, we're have not not signing anybody. So it's going to be interesting to see what we can do here. We have really tried to hit this really hard. Um, we've got a massive transfer budget. Not that I'm going to use any of it. We're massively underspending in terms of our wage budget, which is great for clearing this debt. But there's still a lot of money here that we do need to get our way through. So we're going to have to be proactive for yet another season. I'm keeping these three players pinned in their positions for the season because it worked really, really well last time around. And um, we are still trying to shift a couple more players if I do manage to shift if anyone I will let you know uh, players like Christian Eriksen is one that I'm trying to get rid of potentially uh, maybe Scott McTominay as well I am trying to list some of these players and let come some of the younger players come through uh, like like Hannibal Meshbri, Dallow, um, James Sancho's obviously back from his loan and he's not annoyed at me so it's going to be interesting to see how he gets on uh, now he's back obviously these two are pinned in but I imagine he'll be making a lot of substitute appearances for us this season um competitions wise we finished as FA Cup winners last season meaning we will have the community shield other than that everything is the status quo the board are only expecting us to qualify for the europa league um but obviously with the additional coefficients i think we can still do some damage here obviously we don't have anyone no one at all in the media dream 11 uh, and we're predicted to finish in fifth so it's going to be an interesting season obviously i still think the team is pretty darn strong if i go back to the team and i quick pick without restriction the unpicked players 
Uh, this is kind of what we're looking like for the season. Onana in goal, Wambasaka, Lindelof, Martinez, and Malassia comes in here. Obviously, I've got Luke Shaw as well, but he is injured. Shock. Uh, Mason Mount is going in at the DM. Uh, Mainu alongside Fernandez, then Sancho, Rashford, and Hoyland. Uh, that's obviously not picked the players into the missing positions because that is what it would look like for the most part. I still think the team's pretty good. I still think they're capable of doing stuff. So let's sim season two and see if we can keep picking up trophies. As last season's FA Cup winners, we opened the season with the Community Shield, where we would take on Manchester City. We were slightly the better side here and opened the scoring in the seventh minute, as Victor Lindelof was on hand to head home a Bruno Fernandes free kick. And that is how the game finished, to see us get one over on our City rivals. Or so I thought. Our defence of the EFL Cup got off to a flyer as we were handed yet another favourable run. We first dispatched Wolves followed by Aston Villa and then Crystal Palace before defeating championship side Bristol City in the semis over two legs. That set up our second final appearance in a row, but this season we'd have a Manchester derby for the trophy. Much like the Community Shield, this was a tight affair, but this time it was City who made the breakthrough as Erling Haaland climbed above Lindelof in the penalty area to guide the ball into the back of the net for the only goal of the game. Let's call that 1-1 this season, Pep. And sadly, our defence of the FA Cup didn't go according to plan either, as we made it to the semi-finals beating lower league opposition again before facing Chelsea at Wembley. Noni Madweke opened the scoring for Chelsea in this one before Cole Palmer would add a second just past the hour mark. We didn't show huge amounts of life, but Marcus Rashford pulled one back from the penalty spot before Diogo Dallo forced the game into extra time with his 95th minute goal after Rashford missed a chance that was easier to score. Then in extra time, we took the lead for the first time in the tie as Garnacho cut in from the right and managed to beat Robert Sanchez at his near post. But Chelsea wouldn't be denied as they pulled level through that man Cole Palmer to take the game to penalties. And sadly for us, this is where things fell apart as both Lindelof and Hoyland saw their penalty saved by Sanchez to see us drop both domestic cup competitions in the same season. Our Champions League campaign also had mixed results as we either won or lost in the league phase. There was definitely no in between. Those four wins saw us collect 12 points and finish in 16th in the table and make it through to the knockout phase of the competition, but we would have to play a playoff. We were drawn against the Italian side Juventus and not a lot happened in the first leg in Turin other than Diogo Dallo giving us a slender lead in the second minute. The game back at Old Trafford was much better entertainment as we scored two goals inside that first 20 minutes to open up a nice aggregate lead. Just before half-time, Juve did pull a goal back as Tyrell Malassia unfortunately deflected the ball into our own net. Rashford then made it 3-1 on the night with his goal in the 84th minute. Juve did rally late with two goals of their own, but we managed to progress with a narrow 4-3 aggregate lead thanks to that goal in Turin. So we moved into the round of 16 where we were drawn alongside French side Monaco. This time we were at home first and it was the visitors who struck with Briel and Bolo. We did manage to equalise through a lovely Bruno Fernandes free kick, but we couldn't score again to give ourselves a job to do in the second leg. In Monaco, Christian Eriksen put us ahead on aggregate with a long-range effort in the first half, but Monaco would score a goal of their own through former Liverpool man Takumi Minamino. So the stage was set for someone to step up and win the match for us, and Jadon Sancho did just that. We played a short corner to Sancho, who was stood on the edge of the penalty area, and he lashed his shot into the back of the net with some pace to see us move into the quarterfinals. Here we were handed a massive test as we take on Real Madrid, with the first leg being at Old Trafford. And to my surprise, we took the lead in this one as Garnacho made a nice run from the right hand side before beating Courtois down low at his near post. But minutes later, Madrid were level as Rodrigo ghosted in at the far post and smashed the ball past Onana. That meant that we had it all to do in the Bernabeu, and that task became even harder as we gave away a penalty early that David Alaba converted. Things were compounded a little more in the second half as who else but Jude Bellingham extended that lead for Madrid with an audacious chip over an ank rushing Onana. We did have a late goal of our own through Aaron Wambasaka, but it was too little too late, and our final cup adventure of the season was done and dusted. And finally, we have the Premier League, where I wanted to progress from last season's fourth place finish, but we got off to a great start, winning our first five games in a row, including a 3-0 win against Liverpool. Much the same as last season, we were good, but in typical United fashion of late, we were dropping losses against teams that we should be beating, like Nottingham Forest and Bournemouth. 
This season really saw the emergence of Rasmus Hoyland, who was our top goal scorer this year, bagging 34 goals in all competitions. Another highlight for us this season was how the assists were shared around the team, as Tyrone Malassia, Bruno Fernandes and Alejandro Garnacho all finished the campaign on 14 assists. In the second half of the season, we continued in the same form as the first, but this time the losses were coming against some of the better sides in the league. So I guess that's a little bit of a silver lining. We finished the season with a 5-1 walloping of Chelsea, which saw us achieve second place in the league, but sadly for United fans, it was another Premier League title for Manchester City. That meant that we finished with one minor piece of silverware, but I know that isn't good enough for United fans. Looking at the finances, we've sorted the overall balance of the club, which is now at almost 175 million, and the net debt is now down to 223 million. So let's see who we can shift in this summer window. So this summer, there was only one major outgoing for lots of money, and it was this man. Bruno Fernandes has now gone to Saudi Arabia for a massive, massive fee. Now, Bruno is still fantastic and would have been a very good player for us this season. However, with the challenge that we're trying to do, 109 million up front as well, by the way, not in installments. 109 million was too good for me to turn down. Christian Eriksen also moved on, going over to Sporting on a free transfer. Again, alleviating some of that pressure on our wage budget. And we've had one player leave on a free, uh, Tyler Fredrickson, and Jace Fix uh, Fitzgerald has gone on loan to Port Vale. We're starting to struggle. The squad is still decent, but not very deep. So we need some of our young players to start coming through, through the um, development center. And at the moment, we don't really have that. I mean, Ben Clark could be quite good. He's not at a uh, first team level just yet. Tom O'Brien, I think I'm going to try and work on this guy rather than being a winger uh, because he's not electrically quick. I'm going to try and convert him into a midfielder because I think he could play a Mazzala really, really well. Uh, he's 17. He's been capped by England at under 19 level. But again, they're not really ready to come into this team. There's a lot of potential down here. Um, so we're going to have to see what we can do. But my main problem is actually at the back. Um, obviously, we're going to keep these three players pinned into these positions. And then if we pick the unpicked positions, this is how we're looking. After Martinez and Lindelof, we're kind of struggling at the back. Luke Shaw can play centre-half if I need him to, um, along with Will Fish, who's come into the squad. But other than that, we are not very deep at centre-back at all. That is all we have to work with, which I think could be a problem. But we're going to have to see what happens. We're going to have to see what happens. The debts are moving in the right direction. The club balance is ticking over again. We've still got a massive transfer budget. Um, our wage budget as well, if I move that all the way to this side, is just under nine million we're spending just over three so again in terms of keeping money at the club we should be absolutely flying the net debt is still on the way down along with these loans but we are getting there guys we are getting there um in terms of the competitions again this is how we are set up the board now wants us to qualify for the champions league uh, so obviously with the coefficients, I think that should be doable. But if we look at the season preview, we're predicted to finish in seventh, guys. So there's lots of teams now that are predicted to finish above us. And that is largely down to that squad depth problem. I think our first 11, for the most part, can still hang with any of these teams. But beyond that, I think we could be in a little spot of bother. Even teams like Newcastle, uh, Spurs, Chelsea, etc. Uh, they all seem to have uh, a lot more depth than we do. But obviously... We aren't signing anybody so that's to be expected obviously we do have these four competitions this season no community shield for season number three because we didn't win any trophies let's simulate the season see how we go Kicking off season three, we have the first trophy that is up for grabs in a season, the EFL Cup, when we made our third final in a row. Except for Chelsea in the fourth round, our run to Wembley was relatively easy yet again, and this season, we'd face Liverpool in the final. We showed a real statement of intent in this one as Jaden Sancho put us ahead in the first minute of the game, but Liverpool were able to equalise through Mo Salah. Marcus Rashford then gave us a lead for the second time in the game from the penalty spot, but yet again, Liverpool were able to draw level this time with Diogo Jota providing that goal. And this is how the game stayed, forcing it into extra time, where Scott McTominay scored to give us the lead for the third time in the game, and this time we were able to hold on to win our third EFL Cup in four seasons, if you count real life as well. 
However, we couldn't carry that form into the FA Cup as we managed to narrowly beat both Newcastle and Everton on the road before losing to Wolves at Molyneux in the fifth rank. And our Champions League campaign was almost a mirror of last season. We won four of our eight league fixtures to finish 15th in the table and go into a playoff fixture. Here we face Fenerbahce, a side who we did comfortably beat in the league phase. This went exactly as expected, beating them 3-0 in Turkey before a 4-1 hammering at Old Trafford. So we moved into the round of 16 where we faced Barcelona. We were at home in the first leg and despite going a goal down, Tyrell Malassia took over this game, bagging himself a goal either side of a strike from new gen Tom O'Brien to give us a 3-1 lead. At the new Camp, we continue to be impressive with Jadon Sancho this time bagging a brace in a 2-1 win to see us progress with a 5-2 aggregate victory. It was English opposition up next as we took on Arsenal in the quarterfinals with the first leg at Old Trafford. This first leg was an absolute barnstormer and a great advert for the Premier League as goals were flying in left and right. We took the lead twice in this one only to see Arsenal equalise on both occasions before they took the lead themselves through star boy Bukayo Saka. So we were 3-2 down at home but the boys really stepped up in this one as Ama Diallo and Diogo Dallo both scored in the final 20 minutes to see us hold a narrow lead going into to the second leg. At the Emirates, I'd like to say that we were the better side, having more possession and more shots, but sadly, Arsenal came out on top of this one, with Kai Havertz getting the decisive goal in extra time. It seems like the Champions League quarterfinals is the farthest we can get in that competition, but luckily, back in the Premier League, things were much better. We were fantastic to start the season, going on a 19-game unbeaten run to top the league in dominant fashion. This season saw Marcus Rashford return to his goal-scoring best with a massive return of 37 goals along with 15 assists to be our main man this season. It was Arsenal who brought our amazing start to the campaign to an end in January, but looking at the fixture list, you can still see plenty of green there as we were consistently picking up all three points more often than not. That run saw a surge to the club's first Premier League title in 13 years, gathering an impressive total of 93 points. So we had a League and League Cup double in Season 3, and we've had our first appearance of our own new gens into the side as Tom O'Brien made 25 appearances in all competitions this season. And we're going to need many, many more types of players like this coming through our development centre, actually getting first team minutes, if this challenge is going to be a success. We've managed to clear out our net debt now, but the club still has 226 million in outstanding loans, so this challenge isn't over just yet. So I am starting to run out of players to sell into Season 4, and that is no surprise. Because we have so many players in the wide areas, I have sold Ahmed Diallo. He has gone to Bournemouth. Um, not quite as good as Garnacho. Didn't really develop as well mentally as I would have hoped. Uh, we sold him for £18.75 million over to Bournemouth, and hopefully he has a good time there. We've also sold Hannibal Mejbri over to Long uh, for £8 million. Again, not really getting into that midfield spot. And also we have have our own new gens coming through who I touched on last time out and um, we are going to actually I'm not going to pin Cullen because he's not quite good enough yet but Tom O'Brien the player who I mentioned a couple seasons ago I've transferred him or transferred him transitioned him from a winger into more of a central midfielder he's got 14 pace but only 10 acceleration so I think he's much more of a central midfielder bit of a box-to-box -box type who can be created with 17 flair 17 technique he's good on his left foot so I'm going to pin him in this position all season uh, probably going to play a decent uh, amount alongside Mainu. Obviously, we've got Mason Mount as well, so they're going to occupy these two positions, I would imagine, because if we quick pick without restriction the unpick positions, this is what we're doing. It's moved Kobe Mainu into more of a defensive midfield position, but this is how we are set up this year. As I said, the team is still really good from a first team level. Beyond that, like first 11 level, beyond that, we're kind of struggling. Um, I will say players like Reese Jones is another one who's come through our new gen setup. He's okay. He's 17 years of age. He's a fully well, full, fully fledged Welsh international, but beyond that, we're kind of struggling. We've also got this guy as well, Nathan Miller, who could be a right back for us. I'm not too sure yet. Uh, obviously, we brought Shea Lacey up, who's a real life player. Uh, he's been called up to the first team alongside Tony Cullen, who could play some minutes for us, maybe as a defensive midfielder if we do need uh, an extra body in there. But this is how we're looking going into the season. We do have five competitions again this year. Obviously, this time we won the Premier League. Uh, so we will have the Community Shield where we take on last season's FA Cup winners, Manchester City. The board now only wants us to qualify for the Europa League, which is great because expectation not being high is very good because ultimately this team doesn't really have 
to the depth to fight on all these fronts. I kind of want to just keep qualifying for the Champions League to keep getting that money in. 12 million just for qualifying is good on, good for me. Uh, and we've got a player in the Media Dream 11 now as Marcus Rashford is that guy. Fantastic physicals, really, really good mentally. He's still got 17 finishing. He's fantastic in this year's game. Uh, I'm a big, big fan of Marcus Rashford. We're going to simulate season four and let's see how the roll of the dice goes this year. Now, I have to start this season by saying this is the best season I think I've ever seen from a team on Football Manager. We open the season with a Manchester derby in the Community Shield, where we open the scoring through Garnacho, but were pegged back by Erling Haaland. Then, against the run of play, we managed to get the final decisive breakthrough as Jaden Sancho's cross was turned into his own net by Josco Gavardio to see a strike first blood with a first trophy win of the season. But we didn't have everything our own way as our defence of the EFL Cup was halted very swiftly by Arsenal in the quarterfinals. The game took place at the Emirates and we just weren't at the races on the day as Arsenal ran out comfortable 3-0 winners. But this season did see us have our best run in the FA Cup since season number one. We had a more favourable passage through the early rounds, taking on Chelsea in that final. New Gen fullback Nathan Miller gave us the lead on the stroke of half time, and we added a second shortly after the restart through Luke Shaw. Romelu Lukaku did pull a goal back for Chelsea, but our class shone through with an additional goal from Garnacho and Malassia to see us win our second FA Cup of this save. And our defence of the Premier League got off to a great start with a 2 1 derby win away at the Etihad before putting together a string of eight games unbeaten before losing surprisingly to Crystal Palace at home. This season saw us win the difficult games against the likes of Arsenal and Manchester City, but lose stupid games to the likes of Southampton. Our main man was yet again Marcus Rashford, and I have no idea what got it into him this season, as he scored a magnificent 50 goals in all competitions, along with 16 assists, and he is now wanted by Al Nasser in Saudi Arabia, and I cannot afford to lose him, as he is carrying this team right now. We've also promoted our second new gen into the first team in fullback Nathan Miller. He scored in the FA Cup final, but doesn't look like a fully-fledged United player yet, but I'm hoping with exposure to first-team football, he will turn into our new Gary Neville. <laughs> In the second half of our Premier League campaign, we were nothing short of brilliant, only failing to score points in just one single game. It wasn't a huge return in terms of points, but we collected 83 to win our second Premier League in a row, with Spurs the team in second. So we were pretty dominant in England. Could we be a dominant force in Europe again? Well, our league phase was pretty comprehensive, winning five of our eight games to finish in fifth place in the table and move into the round of 16. Here we faced French side Monaco and we were put on the back foot immediately as the first leg in France as Fiori and Balogun opened the scoring inside 10 minutes. Garnacho made it all square in the second half, leaving me confident we could progress with the second leg at Old Trafford. And that is just what we were able to do, with Marcus Rashford bagging an impressive hat-trick whilst playing through the middle as a striker. On to our usual stumbling block of the quarterfinals where we would take on English opposition in Chelsea. We took the lead in the first leg at Stamford Bridge through Hoyland, but Chelsea pulled level through Wesley Fofana. But our home form in the second leg saw us move into the semi-finals for the first time in this video as O'Brien, Dallow and a brace from Kobe Mainu saw us win 4-0 on the night and get a 5-1 aggregate win. In the semis, it would be Italian opposition in now eight-time winners of the competition, AC Milan. The first game was at the San Siro and Milan struck first, opening the scoring from a set piece, but Rasmus Hoyland was on hand to apply the finish to a lovely flowing move to see us move into the halftime period all square. The second half was pretty tight and on the hour mark, we gave away a penalty, which Lucas Ocampos dispatched beyond Onana. And that is how the scores remained in Milan. So we were a goal down in this tie, but so what? Anything is possible at Fortress Old Trafford. In this one, Jadon Sancho pulled us level on aggregate with a neat finish inside the box before Marcus Rashford put us into the lead just before half time. Then with Milan pushing for an equaliser in the dying minutes, we were able to hit them on the counter as Garnacho tapped home from close range to send us into the Champions League final for the first time since 2011. And here we would take on Real Madrid in one that was a bit of a battle for the ages. 
New Gen Tom O'Brien fired us into the lead in the 12th minute, but those celebrations were quickly cancelled out as Madrid were able to equalise just four minutes later. But we kept our composure and we let our wide men take over as both Sancho and Garnacho both netted to see us open a 3-1 lead. Then someone who didn't keep their composure was Eduardo Camavinga as he sliced through Garnacho to receive a straight red card. But even with 10 men, you cannot count out Madrid as Vinicius Jr. scored Madrid's second just before half time. However, with the man advantage, we were able to weather the storm and see the game finish 3-2 and win the club's fourth Champions League title. So we've been able to replicate those heroics from the 1998-99 season and secure a magnificent treble. But even with all these wins, the debt is still there, but we're now under 100 million in outstanding loans. Okay, so I took a bit of a gamble this summer in a way to try and clear as much of the debt as humanly possible. I've shifted out more players than I thought I was going to, and we've got some business to discuss. Scott McTominay has gone for 16.75 million, but this is the big one. Luke Shaw has departed for Al Nasser for 50 five million pounds now luke shaw was getting on the slightly older side at 32 years of age still a very good player and ultimately i probably needed him to play center back but 55 million was too good to turn down uh altai bendir has gone back uh he sorry not gone back the turkish international has gone to saudi arabia sorry um having barely played for us he got sold for 10 million pounds aaron wamba saka has gone as well to west ham for 15 million pounds obviously i did touch on our new gen who came through uh, last season so we've made another 98 million pounds in transfers and again our transfers in is just so so sad um this is the team and what we're going to do with things this season um we've brought in uh harry amas uh, who could be an option for us he wants a free transfer so i'm hoping i might be able to save that by playing him a little bit maybe who knows it that left back spot we still got nathan miller into the team here still not really at first team level but having sold wambasaka i have him and dallow to basically play in these two areas and he's 17 and he's He's doing all right. Kobe Mainu is going to take over that Mazala position. And we do have Tom O'Brien, who is pretty good, actually. Uh, capped to England under 20 level. He's 19 years of age now. He's now a natural in central midfield, which I think is where he's probably better. Um, and hopefully these two can kind of anchor our midfield for the remainder of this, video, of this video. I don't know. Obviously, where we won the Champions League and stuff last season, we've got competitions galore this year. We've got the Community Shield. We've got the Super Cup. Um, the board want Champions League qualification yet again. Uh, but if we take a look at the season preview, we really are starting to slip our way down the table now. 18-1 to 1 to win the title. Man City are 2-1 to 1 favourites. And they've got a new manager as well. Luis Enrique is the Liverpool manager. Vincenzo Italiano is now the manager of Chelsea. There's new managers coming in left right and christmas all around me can we hold on to any of the trophies that we won last season because this squad is definitely definitely threadbare now So for the second season in a row, we started our season off with the Community Shield and this time we take on Spurs at Wembley. Neither side was at the races for this one and we finally got the breakthrough in the 90th minute as Rasmus Hoyland nodded home a Mason Mank corner. And we followed this one up with the UEFA Super Cup where we took on last season's Europa League winners, Aston Villa. But sadly for Villa, this was a complete mismatch as we hammered them scoring two goals in each half to secure our second trophy of the season. However, in the EFL Cup, we didn't have such an easy run of it, losing in the third round to Arsenal at the Emirates. Our defence of the FA Cup did get off to a flyer, however, after hammering our way through to a second final in a row, albeit with some easy fixtures yet again. The final was a repeat of last year's competition as we faced Chelsea and we started strong in this one with Hoyland giving us the lead on the 15th minute. Five minutes later, we had the chance to double that lead, but Mason Mount saw his penalty saved by his former club to give Chelsea a massive boost of confidence. They used that penalty save to swing the momentum in their favour and they got their reward in the second half with Victor Jokerez making the game 1-1. And that's how the game remained even through extra time, so it would be settled via penalties. But in the penalty shootout, we had the last laugh as Jokerez and Nagalo both saw their penalties saved by Andre Onana to see us lift consecutive FA Cup trophies. And in the Premier League, we went from strength to strength after an opening day defeat to Manchester City, showcasing the mental fortitude that we do have at the team. This season saw Rasmus Hoyland have his best goal scoring season since joining the club, racking up 40 goals in 50 appearances, proving that he has the ability to be one of the best strikers in the world. 
Our second half of the season was outstanding after losing to Arsenal just before Christmas. We then went on a 19 game unbeaten run before losing to Liverpool at Anfield on the final day of the season. But we did just enough to secure our third Premier League title in a row, pipping City to the title by just three points. But if City didn't lose 10 games this season, it could have been a very different story. And as expected at this point in the save, we have the youngest squad in the Premier League, so it's very impressive to see what we can actually do with it. However, in Europe this season, we weren't as impressive, as this is where the experience and maturity of a squad really does help. We lost three of our eight league fixtures, including an embarrassing 5-0 defeat to Bayern Munich. Those results saw us finish 16th in the table and we would need to play a playoff fixture in the knockout stages. Here we were drawn against Italian side Atalanta and being frank, we made light work of them winning the game in Italy 4-1 before extending that lead at home with another 3-1 win. So we moved on to the quarterfinals where we'd have a huge Manchester derby. The first leg was at Old Trafford and despite being the better team, we were handed a surprise loss with Nicolo Zaniolo picking up the only goal of the game that saw Edison secure a man of the match award for his performance in between the sticks. And things went from bad to worse for us at the Etihad as Mateus Nunes doubled City's aggregate lead with a shot from just inside the box that Onana probably should have done better with. We had to go for it in the second half and we were quickly on the score sheet with Mason Mount scoring a deflected free kick, but after that, the City defence stood firm and we were dumped out of the Champions League. This season, we added another four trophies to this rapidly expanding trophy cabinet, but I really feel like this team doesn't have a lot more left in it and we still have £54 million worth of loans still to repay. Which is crazy considering we have almost £600 million in our overall balance. Just pay the debt off, lads. So guys, this is our transfer update for this season and I'm gonna go full William Beal now. I've got nothing left. I've got nothing left! I've got no players left to sell. Uh, pedestri has gone to Watford on a free. Victor Lindelof had no desire to renew his contract at the club. He wanted a new challenge. He's gone for free. Uh, and we've got almost 600 million in our balance. And if I make budgetary adjustments, we could have a transfer budget of just under 400 million pounds. But the video's not over because we've still got debt remaining, which is baffling to me. Just I, like, honestly, just pay it off. Um, the team is, we're struggling now. We are really struggling. Um, obviously, we still do have a good first 11 but Will Fish is going to have to start at centre-back for us now alongside Lotaro Martinez. We haven't had any new-gen players come through in that position. Obviously, we do have a couple in and around the squad. I'm looking at like Miller on the bench here. He is getting better, having played a lot last season. Uh, Reese Jones is again looking okay, but not really a, a main starter. Uh, Taylor is, is another one as well who could be quite good at defensive midfield. Um, I don't know how much he's going to play this year. Um, Lingard, not Jesse. Uh, another one has come through the ranks. Uh, he again looks okay. Shea Lacey, Jay Fitzgerald. We've got players. We've got bodies. They're not at Manchester United standards, guys. They're not. They're just not. Obviously, we still have Rashford, Garnacho, Mount, and stuff like that who are very good. Um, but I'm really expecting a drop off this season. We've got so much on our plate in terms of competitions and stuff like that. I'll be surprised if we make it even to the quarterfinals of the Champions League. Um, and, you know, the Premier League. We've won the last three. If we win this one, it'll be an absolute miracle. We're 25 to 1 to win the title. No players in the Media Dream 11 anymore. The drop off's just going to be mad. I just wish the board would just pay off the debt. It would solve so many problems. This season we faced last year's FA Cup winners, Manchester City and the Community Shield, and this one was an interesting one to see how the season was going to pan out. We raced into a 4-0 lead to take into halftime, with our heads held very high. City did score twice themselves in the second half, but the damage was already done to strike first blood this year. We got off to a rough start in the Premier League, with a fixture computer giving us Manchester City away for the first game of the season for three years in a row. But we were able to write things and had a strong October, November, and December to right the ship. Our key man this season was a surprising one for me as Mason Mount was ever present, making 55 appearances in all competitions, whilst providing 9 goals along with 18 assists. Kobe Mainu is also a mainstay in our midfield and has developed into a great midfielder and is now a fully fledged England international. We were able to close out the season with another brilliant run of games, winning 13 of our last 14 to win our fourth Premier League title in a row. But believe me when I say, it was all downhill in every other competition. 
Our EFL Cup campaign came to an abrupt end, losing to Arsenal for a third season in a row, and we followed that up with a 4-0 loss to League One Bolton Wanderers in the FA Cup fifth rank. And we couldn't hit our Champions League heights of a couple seasons ago as we coasted through the league phase before limping through the knockout stages. We beat Benfica in the playoff round before scraping past AC Milan with a 1-0 win at Old Trafford. It was Chelsea for us in the quarterfinals and we lost both legs of this one 1-0 to crash out of the competition with a whimper. Apart from in the Premier League it seems, this team is really out on its arse now and there's honestly not much more I can do with it. The club now has over £700 million in the overall balance and over £400 million in transfer budget, but the board still refused to clear the remaining £15 million worth of debt. I'm willing to keep going with this one, but I don't know how much longer we can hold on to winning trophies. I was playing my way through the summer whilst playing in the Club World Cup where we topped our group with ease. We then managed to defeat Benfica, Real Madrid and Inter Milan to set up a final against Manchester City. We got off to a woeful start as City took the lead from the spot as Erling Haaland made no mistake in just the third minute of the game. However, the lads showed some fantastic character to rally around in the second half with Rasmus Hoyland scoring either side of a goal for Marcus Rashford to see us win the Club World Cup. Then, as we were progressing and about to start pre-season properly, I received this message. Brazilian investor Matheus Ferretas Lima said he would make £92 million available for new players if his takeover of Manchester United is successful. Lima is reportedly looking to buy out the club's owners for around £2 billion. And then we were placed under a transfer embargo and I had to wait. And then eight days later, the takeover happened and Manchester United finally had new owners. And with that, the board cleared out the remaining loan and United are now debt free. The club is now in a brilliant place financially and you would have over 500 million in the transfer budget to invest in a few new faces for this playing squad. And this is just where you can pick up this journey. I am gonna post these save files over on my Patreon for you guys to get your hands on. In the future, Manchester United, zero debt, Go out and spend some money. Have some fun with it. And if you like these kinds of challenges, guys, check out this playlist. It's all the other one club challenges that I've done on this year's game. I even tried to do the same with Barcelona, but their squad's just, just much better. It's just so much better.